Cars heading out on track in Marrakesh for the second of our three qualifying sessions. Just had the open Q1 session. The big news is that Morocco's Mehdi Banani has not made it through into Q2. Tried some changes on the setup of his Sebastian Loeb Racing Citroën C Elise, the car that won the opening race two weeks ago in Hungary and they did not yield the results. Now, whether that was that the setup just wasn't producing the balance of the car they quite hoped for, or whether Mehdi didn't have enough time to get his head around it and really find the advantage, somewhere between the two, it fell down the cracks in the floorboards. And, and Harry Folkard, 14th for both races, unless there are penalties or failures in front of him, means yeah. Sunday's going to be a long day. It will be. It's a real kick in the teeth for him, that. And Pretty unfortunate, but it, it's also not where he's been running. You know, in the two free practices this morning, he was running eighth and tenth, and that's where he finished. And you know, I think everyone held their hopes on the fact that he might have got through there. But yeah, sometimes that's motorsport, isn't it? I know it's a bit cliche saying that, but it unfortunately doesn't always go your way and it tends to be on the days where you need it to. Eighth or tenth would have been very handy indeed. It means would have meant that in the opening race, he'd have been in the first two or three cars, and that's exactly where you would like to be. All right, the second race, a little bit difficult, but. You know, the opening race, thats it gives you something anyway. 14 doesn't give you much. That's where he'll start for both races. So what do you think lap time-wise? Do you think we're going to see a 19, or do you think that's a little bit optimistic? We're down in the 21.7, I think, was fastest lap. 21.750, the quickest lap we've had so far. But Jose Maria Lopez usually finds a little bit more in Q2 and then a bit more again in Q3. Yeah. I think 19 is optimistic. <laughs> I think we might see maybe a low, a very low 21. Wow, that is a very quick first sector, though. Ivan Muller behind him has just gone 1,700 slower in sector one alone. So this is Pachito aiming to be some four tenths ahead of Muller if he keeps up that amount of gap. And there from the rear end. Muller is second, no, 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 second quickest, in fact, is Thiago Montero. 28.68, so only 700, uh, beg your pardon, 400 slower than Lopez. Montero with a really good first sector. Oh, and Montero finds more pace than Lopez. Look at those splits. Oh, that's a, it's a big chunk as well. It's a massive second sector. Lopez continues at pace. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gets it to turn nicely. 121.65. That's the quickest lap we've seen, 121.46. That's Montero, Muller's third quickest at 22.2, seven tenths away. Huff and Michelitz goes top, 121.463. Coronel ended first free, uh, second free practice, fastest of all by a quarter of a second. That's a 22.1, which is still half a second slower than he went in free practice. Mind you, the track temperature is about 10 degrees higher. James Thompson aiming for a top five in his second ever Chevrolet drive. And that was seventh, is now eighth. This is where they're, we're going to see the real pace of these things coming out, isn't it? Yeah. And this is Tomo's second lap, actually. He's pushing on for another one. <laughs> Aborted Huffy. This is his second lap, and this is better. Oh, no, 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 maybe two meters too late that was better than his first lap in the first sector as you can see he's gone green not better than norby's second sector will be back in the black i think can't go that deep into a yeah there you go look it's bell right out of that one allow norby to go by and uh whether he will don't play cock thinking about making a comment and didn't whether huffy will now cycle through this lap and then build up to speed at the end of it to try for another hot one. Yeah, it's not an awful so. lot of lap to, to uh, bring your tyres back in on that easy. Uh, back in, maybe to, maybe to go for a fresher set of tyres. Rob's mum and dad here as well. Tim Yerk 
wonder if there's a chance we'll get Jörg's Volvo into the top five. Teammate Frederick Ekblom didn't make it through into Q3. He'll start 13th for both races. Uh, into Q2, rather. Yeah, Every, everyone's coming in. That We always see, usually, on normal circuits, that you, you get one real fast lap out of your tyres. Historically here, you've been able to get two laps because of the, the nature of the old circuit, where you, there was no real long, high-loading corners, but the new circuit has a couple more faster corners, so tyre degradation is slightly higher, and obviously the temperatures increased a lot substantially from this morning, so we're obviously seeing one lap is your one lap hit with your tyre now. Seventh place, ahead of Hugo Valente, and at the moment, Nicky Katzberg and Tom Chilton, who hasn't set a lap, will start 11th and 12th, which will be where they are for both races. Don't forget, the top 10, which is completed with the fastest five after Q3, are inverted for the opening race grid. So if you're 10th at the end of Q3, you are the pole man for the opening race. And right now, as at the end of FP2, Gabriele Tarquini, 10th, James Thompson, 9th. Nicholas and Montero would be pretty much on identical times in both FP1, FP2, and now obviously qualifying too. Yeah. They're Little currently, currently 4 thousandths of a second apart. What did they finish apart at the end? Uh, they were 5 thousandths of a... No, 3 thousandths of a second apart at the end of free practice one. And two. And two. two. So the total gap between them has been less than five thousandths of a second on their fastest laps. And taking it in turns as well over who you know, leads and, the way. And how is that even remotely possible that two very different drivers with presumably different setups on the car come within five thousandths of a second in three consecutive sessions? I wonder how different their uh, setups are. You know, perhaps that should be something for Alex to ask later on if there's a bit of time. I don't know. That's going to be uh, very interesting to see. Half the car's in the pits, half the car's out on track. Second session of qualifying is halfway through here. The street circuit in Marrakesh. Don't forget, on street tracks, we go from a 20-minute Q1 and a 10-minute Q2 to a 30-minute Q1 and a 20-minute Q2 to give the drivers, a uh, 15 minutes, rather, to give the drivers a little bit more time to deal with the inevitable uh, potential stoppages and yellow flags that street circuits often bring. We saw Nick Clipson talking on the radio to his driver, Tom Chilton, the only two Anglophones in the Sebastian Loeb racing operation. They converse exclusively in English, everybody else pretty much exclusively in French. So Chilton, 0.48 away. This might be a ninth or eighth place run if he can keep the kind of progress going that he's made in the first sector. Montero, personal best sector one. Here's the man who was fastest in FP2 by a quarter of a second, Thiago Montero, uh, beg your pardon, Thiago Montero, Tom Coronel, scaring the wall a little bit there. Yeah, that's that toe out on the rear that we were talking about earlier. You could see the back still, still rotating on the exit of the corner. Yeah. He's saying particularly into corner three. He said, I'm getting turning over steer at corner three, which is scaring the wheels out of him. Chilton 1.08 away, 1.2 away is James Thompson in ninth. So this would be for a front row start. Goes ninth, Thompson 10th. That would be a very interesting be a good front opening row, race it? front row, yeah. <laughs> Two former teammates at Vauxhall. In fact, did they race together at Vauxhall? No, their I think careers they overlap, I don't think they did, did they? No. I think I'm wrong there. I think Thompson was in, uh, in 100, you can see when Chilton was with Boxall. Oh, you can hear, hear the front wheels locking up there. Casberg yeah. really hustling it there, wasn't he, through turn one. Good lap, though, P5. Yep. See, again, there's not been a race weekend where Kasberg hasn't shown all the ability to get into Q3. He's not always made it, but he's definitely got the ability. I wonder what Huffy can do, because he, he had a bit of a disappointing first run for Rob. Yeah. Um, I think he's, def well, he's definitely got more left in him and in the car, so let's see how he gets on. We saw him lock up a couple of times, and I think that cost him, so this could be telling as to how, he, how he's going to fare for the rest of qualifying. 
Chilton's 11th, by the way, courtesy of that lap. So this is to try and get himself into the top 10 and doesn't make it. Tyres didn't have enough left in it. OK, it's a 1 minute 25, 1 minute 30 maybe lap back into the pits. Then he'll have another 1 minute 30 to get back to the line. That's... That'd be very tight. <laughs> that'll leave a minute to change the tyres. And you know, almost without doubt, Sod's Law says, as he comes into the pit lane, he'll be whisked into the Weybridge. Yeah, I think unless they've opted out because he's, he seems to have backed up. You know, I'm sure if, yeah. if his intention was to come in and get back out again, he'd be fully lit on his way in now. Well, Huffy is fully lit. Tarquini appears to have bailed as well. He's in the pits. He's, there's four minutes remaining. I think Tarquini is in trouble. I think Chilton is done. Huffy. Thompson, 10th. Valente, 9th. Huffy's a 10th down in sector one. Sector two is not quite good enough either. Three tenths now, off, two tenths off. This is where the Hondas think We've got the pace to be on pole, and all three of their drivers want to be the man who gets that pole position. Because with pole, not only do you get five championship points, which all helps to clean, clean things up, tighten, tighten things up a little bit, but also when it gets to the main race, you have the best shot at running down to the first corner and being in front. Where Huffy is, if he was to stay in around that area after Q3, then that, that wouldn't be the end of the world if he, if he could stay around there. It's a great point scoring position. You, could, you know you're gonna, you are potentially in a bit of the melee, but you're always, if you can stay in that top three, four area, it's not a bad place to sit. Now, I was about to write this lap by Ivan Muller off because he was a black first sector, which means not even a personal best. The second sector is, will this put him into the top five at the expense of Nicky Katzberg? He comes across the line sixth, so it doesn't. He does bump Tom Coronel down, but it's just a swapping of positions. So he goes from where he was, sixth, uh, seventh to sixth, ahead of Coronel. Which actually gets him nothing, because there's no championship points outside the top five, and it means he's just in a different place in the middle of both grids. Thompson's going out oh, after another run. Me. Look at the way that the back started to move around as he... That's that big, big dip in the braking area there, isn't it? We went on this morning and found there's yeah. some, so many undulations on the braking areas. My, where you're turning in as well, right where you don't want it. He really there's another seems one. to find it. Yeah, no, this one particularly he really seems to find a lot. Surface changes as well between the old surface from the old circuit. Bits of old road, painted lines, unpainted lines. Yeah. Zoe watching as James Thompson is out on track again. Tom Chilton starting to build up to speed here. This is to try and get into the top ten. Gabriele Tarquini is back out. Huff is parked. Montero is parked. Michelitz is parked. They're either in the top five and Q3 or they're not. But everybody else is trying to get into the top ten. Except this man, Lopez, fastest second sector. Lopez goes purple again! And Chilton has to stay out of the way of Coronel. This could be a good lap from Lopez. He's only... Oh, goodness me! Yeah. Lopez, fastest of all, 121.457. So he started the morning with a 22.14, he's now down to a 21.45. So he's gone half a second quicker in the course of three sessions. That's a real piece of class, isn't it? Being able to do that on the, the last lap when you know all your rivals are sat in the pits and can't, yeah. can't do anything about it. Well, it still means that Nicky Katzberg is in the top five, as is Rob Huff, Norbert Michelitz and Targa Montero. Lopez goes to the top of the pile, Tarquini 12th at the moment. Björk on a quick lap, look at that. Two tenths away in the first sector, Ted Björk. Björk could put himself into the top five at the expense of the only larder. Tarquini locks up a little behind Muller. Ivan will get out of the way of his former teammate and good buddy. 
Checker flag is out. It's the last chance saloon. Thompson is in 10th, but Chilton and Tarquini are both on laps. Tarquini's on a quick one. Tomo has not got a green sector to his name yet. And if Tarquini goes quicker, Thompson will be bumped out of the 10. And Tarquini comes along across the line in 11th. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. James Thompson will start as the DHL pole sitter for our opening race in Marrakesh. Goodness me, that was close. Never 11 never hundredths of a second, Gabrielle Tarquini behind. Wow. I don't know how Rennie Munich's day is going in the rally cross but uh, he will be very pleased to hear that bit of news that his car, his team, and his stand-in driver have claimed the DHL pole for our opening race here. Tomo will start ahead of Hugo Valente. I feel like it's going to be quite hard to improve, improve that time, but let's see. A lot of people can make mistakes as well. Why well, is on young shoulders, young Nicky Katzberg, doesn't he? Not only is he fun to be around and quick as you like in a car, but, OK, it is going to be tough. It's going to be hard to catch them, but they've got to produce the perfect lap as well. So if I can produce the perfect lap, knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and it, it's so tight that these top five are so close to each other. As you just said there on the radio, somebody else has to make a mistake. That's all it takes, one, one or two people to make a little minor error or a little judgment mistake. Maybe at turn seven, where we've seen it a few times already, then t turn seven or onto the, the start finish straight running over that kerb on the exit, that could be the difference. Dave Scott. Yeah, Scott is engineer. <laughs> Watch it with interest. Well, now this, you know, this is as, almost as much a key element as any of the corners on the track, is how you get to the start of the flying lap, isn't it? What you've done, how you've brought your tyres in and all of that. And this is all part of the art of driving a front-wheel drive touring car. Yeah, and that, as we've seen there, you're getting one lap out of your tyres, so we'll all be very mindful not to take too much out on the out lap, but you need to get the pressure and the temperatures back up to where they need to be. Your brake temperatures have to be right. So you're doing all that, concentrating on all that, but also making sure that your brain's in the right place for, for your, your one-out hit lap. So here's Q2 fastest, a 1.22.1. And that will be the target that he is trying to better now. In fact, if he could, a 1.21.457 would be better because that was the lap set by Jose Maria Lopez. So here we go. He's going to cross the line, single flying lap. These five cars now will decide positions 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the opening race grid and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the main race grid. Nice and tidy through turn one there, obviously late on the brakes, managed to get on the power nice and early as well. You could hear the throttle pick up nice and crisp. Nice tight line in three, hugging that white line all the way around three quarters of the turn. It's pretty much 180 degree corner, four. Now, how is he going to ramp it over the kerbs here? That's the, the other option, isn't it? Not, not mullering it too hard, but yeah. different line to what we've seen the Citroens being able to do and produce. Well, to get away with that, you have to turn in a little deeper, triangulate the corner a little more. That's corner seven and eight. These two that sort of tie together. Then a long sweeping right-hander. Remember, we used to have that long, super-fast left-hander at the far end of the track. What remains of the old back straight used to carry on for about another half a kilometre. Beyond this, this was where the second chicane was. And now, 11 and 12, it's five seconds from the line. Four, three, two. OK, 122, 161, so just a fraction... <laughs> fraction slower. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough looking at those sector times. I think depending on what rubber everyone else has got left to use, it doesn't 
doesn't seem quite as quick as we've seen in uh, Q2 there. Rob Huff already out of the pit lane and warming up. You saw Nicky Katzberg pushing on to get back to the pits. He wants to make sure this is a short lap, so you can't be faffing around. He wants to make sure that he is out of the way and safely back in the pit lane before Rob Huff really gets up to speed and starts his lap, if he can. Katzberg is sort of halfway around the lap already, and you, and you do have to get on with it. So Huffy into turn one. See all those different patches and little undulations and bumps all the way through corner one. Managed to get rid nice and close to those tyres because you can see actually the camber drops off on that green stuff and you hook the wheel over it, it kind of drags the back of the car around. Not as quick in sector one as Katzberg yet. Let's see, sector one earns here and 28.969. 28854, so 1100s quicker. really to all these laps obviously is all three sectors tied together but sector two is where more drivers have found more time than anywhere else yeah it's got the most complex sections hasn't it there's more to it it's a bit more technical a few more bigger stops and changes of direction as well so it's a longer section and you, you've got more to do in that section so the driver can have a little bit more influence so Katzberg's second sector was a 35.866. Huff is two tenths up now. 35.709. Doing it the old-fashioned way is his dad. That's how we learn in the rain. And across the line he comes four tenths up on Katzberg. Goodness me. That is a good oh, lap. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, and that throws down the gauntlets for his teammates as well as for Pachito Lopez. That's about as good as we've got, I'm afraid. I just heard Rob over the radio there saying that's about as good as we've got. But that's it's a quick lap it's for these guys to try and beat now, isn't it? Yep, that is a good lap. So his two teammates will go. Chago lies second in the points. Yeah. Five points for for pole here. Four for the second fastest lap. Three, two, and one for the other guys who go through into Q3. Chargo's lap is three tenths up on Huffy's lap that he's just done though in Q2. So let's see what he's got. Oh, he had to he had to turn into that a little bit early. He made the turn in, and as he dropped into that that uh, concrete change, he had to give him a little bit of opposite lock. That will have cost him a little bit of time. Watch his eyes. I mean, you can see everything else he's doing, but just look at the determination that in these drivers' eyes. This is 100% focus. There's no room for any errors here at all. Still a good first sector there, despite that slight slide. Yep. 500's quicker. Yeah, yeah but game. really good run, seven yeah. through eight. Yeah, it was made. No running out wide, he really got that nailed. Right on the limit. And corner ten. You can see the guys on the pit wall are the same as you are at home and the same as... Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that, look at the, the two hundred up. This could be very close indeed. What's he got in sector three? He's run up the kip. Oh, He's run wide. that might be enough for 200. Huff will stay on top. He does stay on top. Thiago behind Nicky Katzberg. No, he's not second. Sorry, my timing screen is taking a lot longer to update than the one on the telly. Oh, that, was, that was literally that final curve, isn't it? He just, just ran slightly wide. It wasn't a, a big mistake, but just slightly wide, which is what we said. You know, you yeah. can't make these mistakes. Yeah. Tiny, tiny error. Look at the disappointment. He'd done all the hard work there as well. Norman Mikulis, second fastest in Q2. And he has not been the quickest of the Hondas so far. He's been the second quickest of the Hondas in every session up until Q2. He's quicker than both his teammates, but can he make a neat and tidy lap out of this? That was more like Huffy's line through turn one. Yes. Now, Montero seems to take it slightly differently. 
I always find Michelin, he always looks really relaxed in the car, yeah. more so than the other guys tend to. Again, kind of just triangulates that off a little bit there in turn three as well. See how close you are to the wall as you turn into the chicane. Four hundredths of a second behind. Now don't forget that's behind Tiago, who set the fastest first sector. Oh, and he actually touched the white uh, lining on that tyre stack. We talk about leaving no room for error. He took the no room for error and a little bit more out of that one. Good, good second sector, but. Will it be enough? I don't think it will. Faster than anybody else so far. He's got that slight deficit in sector one, though, he's got to make up for. But if you can get that right, that exit did run to be Very one. close indeed. Oh, and 36 thousandths behind Huffy from 71 thousandths up. Couldn't get a lot closer than that, could be for the no. Tenry. Now, each of the Honda drivers has got a fastest sector each. Tiago was best in sector one, Norby best in sector two, Rob best in sector three by two tenths over Montero and by one tenth over Michelis. And that's the differences between them. Here we go. Now we're going to see what Citroen's got left in the tank. <laughs> So will Jose Maria Lopez start another main race from pole position? Will he produce yet another inspired lap? Looks good in turn one there, nice and smooth. Again, slight bit of turning over steer, but we're seeing that with everybody over that bump. Started on pole in France, started on pole in Hungary for the main race. Slovakia, it was his own teammate Ivan Buller who went to the Pachito draw of special qualifying laps and grabbed one out. That's in very deep, and he's using oh. an awful lot more curve than he normally does there. Tenth up in sector one, but I think that's I don't think that's that sector two is going to be ruined from that, I think. Well, it's a long sector, sector two, and that was only the beginning of it. If he can nail seven and eight here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Avoiding action there. He's going to have to find somewhere, some time from somewhere, I think, because that was a pretty big hit. He does, doesn't he? He's like always, there as well. always finds some pace from somewhere. Look at Marshall sticking his head out. Wow, look at that. Yeah, two, two wow, half, quarter of a second back. He's going to be behind all the Hondas at this rate, unless he finds some magic and sprinkles the oofle dust on it in the final two corners. Oh, and again. Nope, it's a right. little bit ragged. Is he going to be fourth or third or second? P4. Fourth place, 2800s back. It is a Honda 1, 2, 3. Writing that down, that is the first time I'm sure we have seen that. Rob Huff will start the main race as our DHL pole sitter with two teammates riding shotgun slash trying to take the win away from him. But, you know, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. This is it. He just lost the back on turning there. And look, he's been sublime through there all weekend, hasn't he? Every, every time we've seen him go through there, we've commented on it time and time again. He's nailed that and got it perfect, but it just shows it can happen to even the best. Yeah. Yeah, he lost a big chunk there. Can't always be perfect. No, but it's exactly like Katzberg said, wasn't it? On yep. the outline, you know, I need to make wait for these guys to make a mistake and they did but not quite enough not quite enough not quite for Nicky anyway so it's almost sort of a shame otherwise Lopez and Muller would have been on the same run in all <laughs> both RT races because Ivan is sixth for both I know sixth and fifth and Pachita will be fourth and seventh so there's not much to split the difference there, is there? Definitely not. Which, which means even more pressure for Van to get on with it in race one, because Pachita will only be one row behind him. 